What is going on, everyone? My name's Boyt, and I'm back with some more Age of Mythology, the Titans action. We've got some more Pandora's box action coming your way. Today, we've got Chemo versus Count Von Count. An incredibly interesting matchup because, well, for those of you who don't know Count Von Count, he goes way, way back. He's actually won some tournaments way back in the day. They weren't considered S-tier tournaments, but they probably were in terms of skill level, in terms of people who were in there. The prize pool just wasn't that large. But uh, <laughs> we've, got a, we've got a big, big matchup for you today. Yet again, another matchup that very easily could have been a finals matchup. Count on Count actually went really, really deep in the Map Masters tournament recently, which Kane Flame hosted. Uh, so he's actually a really, really strong player. So I'm super excited for this series. We'll get more into the more into the uh, the details of these players a little bit later, but we're getting into the game right away. Spawning in the bottom of the map in the blue color, playing as Odin. His name is Count von Count. His opponent today in the red color, playing as Ra. His name is Kimo. Yes. And as always, game number one is going to be spawning on competitive Mega Random. It's competitive Mega Random because why not have a map which no one can prepare for uh, very well as the first map? We do get some nice spawnage of Water Buffalo here. Hopefully, Kimo can drag this Water Buffalo over to this granary. Otherwise, things are going to be a little bit unfair for him or a little bit unfortunate for him for some reason he's grabbing husbandry here even though he's scouted himself with a whole bunch of hippopotamus on this side but i think he's just feeling like it's gonna have to be a husbandry game here playing against odin does have its uh have have its problems and i think chemo does this uh I, i'm interested as to whether or not chemo does this on purpose because like there are situations where clearly going for hunting dogs gets you a better a better advantage in the game if you have the map for it, but there are certain matchups where maybe it's just not the way to go. And we are seeing him doing this husbandry opening here uh, onto gold already. He goes five villages on food there. Moving over to check out what Count Von Count's doing. It looked like Count Von Count tried to pull his uh, his water buffalo into, into the town center, but he didn't quite make it all the way there. So he's had to build a couple more ox carts out uh, to get underway in this game uh, there, there are some tricks you can do whether or not i didn't actually see what count did in the start there are some tricks you can do to drag this water buffalo as close as you can to the town center and then click uh and then click great hunt so that the the water buffalo spawns here instead of back here which means if it spawns here then there's a big circle around that location which then allows you to drag it next to the town center you can actually skip a skip an ox card in the early stages of the game but it doesn't look like that's what Count Von Count did here in this one. Uh, nonetheless, he also could have dragged the uh, the water buffalo over to the gold mine over here and skipped the ox cart. I think these are things that Norse players really, really need to get used to because it's super, super helpful in the early game to make that sort of thing happen uh, to get yourself... A, it, it's not a huge amount of resources, but it does end up being the difference between like being able to train a Hursa straight away versus train a Hursa at like... 30% classical age, if that makes any sense. Uh, but an interesting matchup, nonetheless. We are seeing the temple coming down over here. Haven't seen a whole lot of Odin versus Ra of late, but there are a lot of options that the Odin player can go for. I'll just ra uh, rally off a couple of uh, of strategies here for you guys to try if you find yourself in this matchup. If you're if you're uh, feeling very much like you, you enjoy Soup's play style, you can go for a Heimdall rush here. Heimdall against Ra is definitely really, really strong. You can even see that look at the base here for, for Kimo. He's got this this sentry tower over here that could be very easily undermined. Opening that gold mine up can be very, very tough. All the other gold mines look like they're very, very uh, open and uh, and easily raidable. So a Heimdall rush here is going to be really strong. Another strategy is if you've got a really nice town center, like we do see over here, four count von count, beautiful gold mine here, beautiful amount of zebra over on that location there. You can actually go for a fast second town center and rush the heroic age yourself, going for a Njord timing attack. Another Heimdall Njord timing attack. Very, very scary for the Ra player, because especially with a gold mine like this, if you go for that undermine, 
uh, or that Heimdall and you send the Einar forward with a Herso while your Ulfsark builds this town center up, uh, you can actually fake a Heimdall rush and, you're, and make your rare opponent overcommit to trying to defend them as an idea. Uh, but we do see Freya on the way here for Count on Count. There is obviously the other way of playing this, which is just play very standard Odin, go for raiding cavalry, try and harass and try and just utilize your economic advantage and, and see how you're going to go. As we do see Ptah coming through for Kima. It looks like he went for a 445 here. So not a 430, 445, not that slow, not that fast. Uh, does he have villages on wood at the moment? Yes, he does. He's got three villages on wood, so it's going to be a, a fairly... Uh, a fairly fast farm strategy here from Chemo, it seems. Uh, and we'll see how things will result from this as uh, it looks to me... Yeah, yeah. so Campbell Count has found his hippopotamus. He has found these zebra. And what is his resource looking like? It looks like it's just floating up to 200. Does he have five villages on wood? No, four villages on wood. So no second town center, it would seem, from Count Von Count. Uh... The, the build order is to make a second town center for Odin. Basically, is you want to put five villages on food, five villages on wood, all the other good stuff there. A uh, little bit of a chat message here from um, from from Gully, actually. How does Chemo put this wall here? Well, on Extended Edition, it's actually not possible. They did they did block that from happening in Extended Edition. But on Vubly, you can just double-click the wall and it will um, build one wall segment here. I think it, it, it's technically a bug, but... We, uh, we accept it because we think that it should be fine. So long as you don't abuse the wall, the wall segments. Uh, which, which is interesting. It's a problem. It's a problem for extended edition. If you do get a tower right on your gold mine, it makes it really, really tough to defend that tower. But, uh, we'll see how things are going to go. Shadoof coming through now for, for chemo as his town center is coming up. We do see the house on this Ford town center over here as the Valkyrie is going to be searching forward here to find their way in. Now, here's a big thing that, that, um, Count Von Count can do. He can burn this forest here and start going straight after this, uh, this gold mine over on that location there. As we do see that the, the uh, longhouse is up, Count Von Count's wood is starting to skyrocket over here. So he's getting some raiding cavalry out as the Valkyrie will be scouting this town center and the villagers get that one up. Plow coming through for chemo. He's starting to throw the farms down. It's going to be a really, really big, big farming uh, farming game here from chemo. He's got plenty of pigs in his base as well to eat as the armory is coming up if we take a look over here for count von count he's also got nine pigs himself so both players have plenty of resources here as the raven scouting around this is a this is one of those maps it's a little bit more congested a little bit smaller the the cliffs on the outside there's very little use for these cliffs uh, you can use say a rock on them to move them all the way around the outside of the map to sneak into your opponent's base for example is one option but for the most part that that uh, the meaning of the of the <laughs> the outside is just to make the map a little bit smaller and be a little bit of a different type of map. There, nice marker there from Kimo pull pulling away there, not taking any damage on the raiding cavalry really either. And uh, a nice little cheeky raid there from Count von Count starting off as he does grab his second town center. I like these plays from Count von Count. I like the second town center as a re reaction to the second town center of a RA player. But one thing is for certain here. Uh, had Count Von Count gone for this faster, like straight away, instead of dropping the Longhouse, he would have been in a better position right now. As he is going after some villagers underneath the town center, he's almost going to get a villager kill, but Chemo's reactions, too good there. Keeps the villagers alive, picks off one raiding cavalry. The villagers are going to get back onto their farms. We see some more farms coming up here, which is a very, very odd position. I think he could have chucked them over on this side as well, but for some reason, Chemo uh, didn't like those, those bottom farms there. But he is getting out... A, uh, this is a metric shit ton of farms. He's got 15 farms here. So 15 is kind of the upper limit of, uh, of farms you want to build to get a decent heroic age timing. As we see a barracks or two barracks coming down actually for chemo. So he's not actually wanting to, uh, to go for a fast heroic. It would seem he wants to maybe start getting some spearmen out as he does see the second town center hit from count von count. So maybe that's a reaction of some variety here as we see, I mean, the barracks coming up, rain will come down. We also see skin of the rhino coming through for chemo super early here as well, as he's probably going to realize that when he rains, there might be a big, uh, flood in onto this uh, onto this town center of an army to try and push him off as we do see the, the walls coming up and the raiding cavalry going to be coming through here with that Wadget sitting in defense it's going to be a really really big help here Skin of the Rhino almost through as the Wadget going to be pulling back underneath this town center as the unit's going to be pushing in here going to try and take out some of these villages as Kimo has to garrison inside this location here 
As the Wadget now starting to get under attack, is the Priest under attack as well. Good micro here from Count on Count. Loses one raiding cavalry there, though, as well. Going to be losing a second one as this Priest is not going to be going down there. A little bit too overzealous from Count on Count. You'd have to expect there. Like, too many, too, too much expect expectation for damage there underneath the town center. You need quite a few units to make that happen. But while he's doing that, trying to go after this location here, as we're now starting to see the Spearmen getting produced from Chemo. Lots of food income here coming through as the Spearmen coming out. We also see some Axemen as well to boot to try and hold on. As the villagers want to come over onto this gold mine for the time being, the Valkyrie will be able to spot that though as units are going to be moving up here to try and defend. So we see a whole bunch more longhouses coming down for Count on Count. Lots of resources in the bank as well. The big question is, is he going to be spending those resources or is he just going straight to the next age? He's still got plenty of food over on this location with that gold mine on this town center as well. It's absolutely beautiful as Kimo comes over here and he says, yep, yeah, this is my spot. And he will be looking to advance to the next age very, very soon. Shaft mine on the way as well. I quite like these early, just a handful of early, uh, early classical age barracks units here for Kimo. He's not playing super aggressive for that heroic age. He just gets a handful of units out. He delays his heroic age by about a minute here. So he's going for a 10 minute, uh, 10 minute heroic age, which is... Um, Really, really interesting there. Instead of the, the nine minute heroic edge is a little bit more risky, but you get the, the, the MIG doll down and everything else really fast. But we do see a super early Scardi coming through here. Two Wadget out for Chemo at this point as the Dwarves moving over onto this large gold mine over there. Kamon that's going to be a little bit scared here as well. So he is he does get a decent heroic age time, but he does have to be a little bit scared about the rock raids coming for him. So the the best way to counter rock raids as uh, as Odin is to just chuck two uh, two hill forts down on your gold mine and, and and basically not have not spread your dwarves out. But for the for the start, while you're waiting for that those hill forts to come down, you kind of have to spread your dwarves out to mitigate all the damage that are possibly going to be coming down. As we do see the villagers moving forward here for Chemo, he's going to be looking to grab this town center here somehow. I'm not sure he's going to quite be able to do that. So we do see some spearmen over here defending this location. Count on count will be retreating away for the time being here. As Kimo gets to that next age, he is trying to get this town center up. We'll see if he's going to be able to. We see the Patsukos coming through, the Axemen in the back, the Spearmen over here to help out as well. It should be enough here for Kimo to fight this one off with the Patsukos and the Wadget to take out those Spearmen on the back. Should be completely, uh, should be plenty here. As long as Kimo micros those Axemen to take out the Hursa, uh, this was going to be a tough fight for Count on Count to take here. It's currently 92 population to 86, so still very, very close as the village is going to be getting back onto that town center over here. We do see the Thrown Axemen going to be denying this for a little bit here as the Batsukos getting some big damage done onto those Thrown Axemen on the back here. Good micro thus far from Kimo getting some really, really good kills. Still no Migdol. There it is. It's just about to pop up. So we will start being able to have Chariot Archers or Camelry here or even just go to the next age at this point I think is a completely viable option for Kimo as well. Uh, does he have a market? He is throwing the market down. So that's um that's going to be completely fine as well as we do see some villagers coming through. It might be worth... Okay, I I'll say it, it might be it might be worth to throw frost down onto this location because you do have eight villages here. However, the big big mistake that a lot of Norse players make in this matchup is not saving their frost for Son of Osiris. It's vitally important to try and well, basically to trade frost for Son of Osiris. Otherwise, your opponent gets that Son of Osiris and it can be next to impossible to deal with. As we do see, we do see the Frost coming through here. The Wadget, the, the Rock tried to pick that up there. The Town Center will be denied. We will see how this is going to go uh, as the Town Center does get denied yet again. Count on Count looks like he's trying his darndest to get to the Mythic Age here. I do see that there's the market coming down. Will he be going for Baldur or for Tia here is the big question. Fimble Winter is going to do a good, healthy amount of damage here in this game as this Raining Cavalry will be able to snipe down that villager over here as it will be retreating. Will he be able to pick it off though? 10 HP, one more shot and it will be going down. And he does pick it off. Good play there for Count Von Count. Uh, as these units going to be streaming in onto this location. We've got ourselves three Frost Giants here. And the thing is here for, for Kimo, he's got to realize he probably just needs to pull back and just allow this town center, well, not, not allow this town center to go away, but just say, no worries, I can't get it right now and have to worry about something else. Let's look at Count on Count's resources. He's playing this one incredibly well here, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as... 
Over here, we do see the rock starting to get harassed down by the throwing axe. Does he have the upgrade? He doesn't have the upgrade to take that rock down. No watchtowers in him. And we do see Balder coming through for Count Von Count really, really early here. This is going to be like a 14 minute. Uh, 14 minute Balder as we see Shifting Sands coming through onto those units over here from Chemo. Gonna be taking those out underneath the town center over here. That fortified town center is up. Watch Towers is through. But Balder on the way. The big question is gonna be does will this will this matter or not as the Wadget now gonna start getting hit away there as the Rock picks that one up. Gonna be pulling onto a different location. Nice play from Chemo. Chemo gonna try and get his town center back up yet again. We'll see if, if Count Von Count's gonna be able to deny this for the time being here or or not looks like he has to retreat back here 125 of 130 population no third town center the question really is is it an immediate ragnarok click here or do you wait and just try and stabilize a little bit knowing that there's not going to be a big god power coming for you from ra you've only got that you've only got osiris coming for you so you've got a little bit more time to play with other like as compared to potentially like a like a a civilization like Greek who might earthquake you or, or even Set who might tornado you. There's also no shifting sands here and it's just Locust to worry about. As the dwarves do get Locust over here. One, two, three kills over there. A nice defense from Count Von Count as the Hursa comes over to try and take down that Wadget here. Picking off that's going to be a really, really big help because it means that the rock raids are going to be over for the time being. Will he pick it off? Yes, he will. Good play there from Count Von Count. Huge win as Copper Weapon's coming through. Balder just about to hit as the villagers or the army retreating back over here. He is in a bit of a difficult position. There are priests here taking everything out with the help of that Patsukos over here. Is the army going to be pulling back? We've got three town centers for Chemo. What's coming out of the temple at this point? We do see Count Von Count with only 10 favor. Lots of resources in the bank though for Count Von Count and he does decide to go for the Ragnarok here. He jumps up to 244 population as the unit's going to be retreating back. Chemo at this point, he's got Sun-Dried Mudbrick fortified, uh, fortified towns and as he doesn't yet have himself masons but he is going through osiris here gonna be retreating back there is only just this one gold mine over here with 1900 gold uh in the in the bank this is going to be a very very difficult thing to deal with we do see a whole bunch of villages over on this gold mine over here count von count not really noticing it as all of the units are going to be streaming in onto this location he has to send like five units or something over onto this gold mine here but he doesn't have a raven or anything checking that out just going to send every single unit in to try and take out this town center over here as one villager goes down we will be seeing the town center under attack it will immediately fall here as a house finally falling there as well we see scalloped axe coming through for chemo as he wants to go into what seems to be mass axe but the big problem is dealing with the fire giant but he will have a mummy here to deal with that moving forward here as some of these mercenary cavalry getting taken out and now we do see those heroes of Ragnarok going to be moving over to push, push off this gold mine Camo's got a thousand gold in the bank for the time being as the rag hero is going to be moving over here to try and take out this uh, Migdol stronghold as chariot archers are going to be getting built as best as he can and look at this gold mine sneak from Chemo over on this location here absolutely huge here uh, as Count Von Count has not worked that out just yet. One villager goes down. Kimo going to be pulling off that gold mine over there as this town center is going up. Look at the five ox caravans here for Count Von Count. That's going to be absolutely huge to build some uh, fire giants at the end of this. If we take a look at the temple here, he should start queuing those up as that favor starts increasing. This town center going to be going down as well on the back over here as Count Von Count here. He's only dropped down about 10 population thus far. Uh, and he's got a little bit of resources in the bank here. He can buy himself some wood if he needs to and grab this town center as well as we do see forest fire coming through onto this location. Does tons of damage onto that army over there. They take they take so much damage as, as Kimo has to pull all the way back into his town center. We still haven't seen this gold mine getting checked out. If we make, take a look at Count on Count's perspective, he does know there's a gold mine there, but he expects there to be no villagers over there for some reason. The other thing is that Kimo can bring his rock back and just try and sneak a gold mine very easily here in this game as we do see a Mikdal stronghold attempting to get thrown up on this location we'll see if count on count's going to start spreading around the map checking out gold mines here uh he's got eyes on literally every gold mine on the map except for this one uh and chemo is getting away with absolute murder here by uh by having that it's the son of osiris over here very alive and healthy as count on count's going to be going into the main base of chemo right now do we have guard towers we do not have guard towers as the son of osiris getting pulled back into the town center he can pull over here onto the backside uh to get a whole bunch of damage done villagers sitting idly by as we've got uh the army of count on count starting to encircle this one over here as a handful of uh 
Heroes of Ragnarok going after this location over here. The Son of Osiris getting good damage done on the back for Kimo as he's trying to deal with all of these Heroes of Ragnarok here in this position. Tons of villagers going down. We've got 63 villagers remaining. Uh, bronze weapons and guard towers coming through, though, for Kimo to help out. He's sitting at 79 of 120 population to 145 of 133 population for Count on Count as the Son of Osiris getting closer and closer to getting picked off over here. 111 HP remaining here as the Chariot Archers going down. We do see the, uh, the Son of Osiris getting closer and closer to falling. 69 HP remaining, but 96 population remaining for Count on Count. He's got plenty of food in the bank here as the heroes of Ragnarok here not able to deny this Migdal stronghold over there at all but has the damage been done is the big question 38 villages remaining for Kimo Count on Count's going to get that two town centers plus the trade route to build villages here he's going to be retreating back and he will give Kimo a big big opportunity now to repopulate and get going again but the thing is I mean if he finds this location over here that's nine villages dead which will possibly equalize on the village account as the heroes of Ragnarok are going to move over here we do see a fire giant moving in onto this position we've got two fire giant here the fire giant follow-up is the hard part for chemo to deal with has he got favor income he's got two monuments here he is but training mummies at this moment but it's all about uh it's all about the micro in terms of how those mummies can deal with the uh the fire giant here as the villagers do manage to pull back ever so slightly the fire giants moving forward trying to get some splash damage in chemo not paying attention over here he's going to lose a handful of villagers on this location good play here by count von count chemo making a big mistake here he's trying to figure out what to do here he thought he pulled those villagers back in but they're not getting uh they're not getting back to the town center just yet two villages remaining here they finally start moving and Count Von Count's going to allow those to survive as he needs to get back. In. He's got equal villages. Eight. He's got uh, 24 villages to 25 villages at this point. So it's incredibly equal at this point, except it's uh, one son of Osiris here with 13 HP remaining, plus the Axemen of uh, of Chemo and the Mummies. So the Mummies going to counter those Fire Giants. The Axemen going to counter those Heroes of Ragnarok as finally Count Von Count's going to move around the map and he's finally checking this gold mine out. Finally checking this gold man out. It, it must say, wait, where, where is he going with it? He, I mean, setting up a market over on this side will be a really, really big help to make that trade route do a little bit more. It's only getting him 26 gold at this point as the fire giant checks this gold man out and he still hasn't thought to check this one. Finally moving over there. These uh, these villages are not going to be able to survive here. So this is going to be even more of an advantage for Count on Count moving in in this game as uh, one villager going to be going down here. Uh, two villagers going to be going down. Kimo hasn't checked this out just yet. He, he's trying to pull back here as the uh, the fire giant waiting in uh, in reserve over here to deal with this. Uh, Kimo, Count Von Count's probably shaking his head as, as he's going to say, "How did I allow that gold mine to be grabbed for for four, for two thousand gold there?" But in reality, it's completely fine here because he's going to pick off all of these villages and be really really happy about it. As the uh, the village is moving straight past this fire giant, is going to get probably two or three kills if he micros a little bit. But it looks like the villagers will get out of here. One more villager goes down, and the rest are going to be getting back home. Uh, and now chemo has got the big grind to get back into this game here. He's got 24 villagers to... Uh, Count on Count's advantage in the village account, but it's a big boom here. So will Count on Count be able to defend everything moving forward in this game? Because in reality, what generally happens here in this reboom stage for the uh, for the for the rag user is that the raids come in, and, and that's how you kind of prevent your opponent. Uh, from getting back, prevent the Odin from getting back into the game. But we haven't seen that happening uh, just yet. As we see a hill fort down on this position, a potential gold staff could come through. There is only, well, there's two mummies here and I see three fire giant out. So the best way to play this is to trade one of those uh, fire giant for one of those mummies. So as soon as the mummy comes in, you just attack the mummy. Uh, the mummy gets one kill. The mummy dies. You or oh, he's got two mummies now. So you basically have to do that for both of those. Things start getting a little bit scary there as this town center is going to be getting taken down here as uh, Chemo is starting to push out. I think Count Von Count kind of needs to just say, no worries, take that location uh, and, and, and just grab the back town center fix the market up which he has done and then uh and then get into a, in a into a good position where he can actually just deal with these axemen uh and we'll see how it's all going to go as the army going to sneak in over here attempt to take down some uh some villages on this location there are axemen over here 
Uh, what's Count Von Count going to do about it, though? He's got his Fire Giant in. He's just going to ignore that as the, as the Fire Giant does a little bit of a moonwalk there. We see the units pushing through over here. Going to get some big damage done. Looks like one... Uh, one Fire Giant does go down, the Count Bomb Count does snipe down the uh, the Son of Osiris there, but both of those Fire Giants getting picked off over here by the Mummy. Beautiful play, as we do see over here on this position. The Villagers getting picked off. Nice play there from Count Von Count. Still with a huge lead in the Villagers, but he needs to get into like mass raiding cavalry with good upgrades here is the big thing that he's missing at this point as the Dwarves do finish up on that gold mine. He does still have a gold mine over here. Villagers over on this location going to look to try and grab those Zebra for himself as we do see the Yarls swinging around the back in an attempt to get onto the onto the mummy here, but it's running away very, very fast over here. At this point, we do see that Kimo has got zero gold income here as he is completely cut off gold as the mummies moving over here. They will be able to take out this uh, fire giant over here, but there is a hero of Ragnarok that potentially could snipe a mummy or something as the town center does go down over here. Count Von Count sitting at 120 of 130 population. These Jarl's going to do plenty of damage or do a, be a very, very good trade here for the uh, for the Axeman as the Fire Giant over here going to be retreating away. Yeah. The, the Mummies, though, are just a, such a strong defense here, being able to one-hit units for the time being. But Count Von Count here, he'll be able to retreat. We do see a, a hill fort over here. He should realize to some degree that if he can hold on a, on a back location here a little bit, he should be uh, completely fine in this game to get like a second, a third gold mine, excuse me, a third gold mine gold star here. There's a 774 gold remaining, but the, the Great Yarl going to be retreating back. 38 villages for Chemo to... Over 60 villages, 60, 67 villages here now for Count Von Count. He's starting the farms up. How are the economic upgrades looking though? We see irrigation, pickaxe, hand axe compared to Chemo, who's got irrigation and shaft mine here with hand axe. So incredibly close here in this game as uh, Count Von Count needs to, maybe, he just needs to retreat back and just accept a little bit of loss here and just say, give just a little bit of ground over to Chemo and rebuild, reset, because his economy is way big enough here to, to carry him through, especially if he can just send one villager potentially to, oh, not villager, one Ulfsark potentially to build that third town center up because Chemo at this point, while he will be able to build this town center, he can't really afford uh, for that that well and uh, imagine some um, potential ballister coming out here to try and snipe down the catapult prevent the settlement from going up here as well as this uh, hero of Ragnarok trying to sneak in take out that uh, that that catapult over here as some units moving through here for count on count is this preempt is this too preemptive here as the uh, as the mummies here going to take out two of those units and count on count does move in with a fire giant now he's trying to ta target down the mummy over here that did just use its special ability good play here as the hero of Ragnarok going to get some damage done onto this one as well one mummy down going to allow the fire giant to get some big damage done here count on count panicking just a little bit in this game as that town center is going up it's it's something that a lot of norse players are worried about is getting into an even uh an even situation against an egyptian player especially against the Ra play it can be really really tough here but we see Dwarven Augur coming through for Count Von Count as he's going to want to start doing some uh, very, very uh, interesting play. We have seen him playing in this game with uh, with a whole bunch of siege towers before. As more villagers getting taken down, we do see the mummy going to start targeting down the fire giant, though, as that's not going to be long for this world. We see the, uh, the, the Great Jarls... Well, the fire giant's not going to be long for this well. The great Yarl's coming through here to try and snipe down the mummy as it's moving around here. This fire giant over here could be a target as well, as that's exactly what the mummy is going for. And it will snipe that fire giant down. Good play by Chemo. As Dwarven Augur coming down, we do see some uh, some portable rams coming in here. I would have liked to have seen some some ballister just to prevent the town center from going up, but not happening just yet. Count Von Kout's army, very, very strong here. Imagine if this was building Yarl's, though. He would have a ton, uh, a ton more damage to to come through as the, the portable ram is going to be moving in. This might be a little bit too crazy here from uh, from Count Von Count. Portable rams at this point might not be the right option here as it looks like all of the military buildings for Count Von Count have been taken out. He is grabbing this town center finally, but he needs uh, he needs more production in this game as one portable ram will come through here to try and take out this uh, this settlement. But with the priest empowering it, it looks like that the, the town center will come up. And two portable rams here against the fortified town centers with uh, Sun-Dried Mud Brick. If Chemo is paying attention here, it will not go down. And Count Von Count is trying to distract as best as he can. 
We'll see if this town center will go down. No, we see the villagers reacting. They're going to take down those rams. No problems here. And we do see the the uh, the hunt still getting eaten up over on this location. More units getting produced over here. We see some military buildings coming down. There's a Migdol stronghold coming down onto this location. Imagine if those portable rams right there were were uh, were ballast here. There's no way this town center would have fallen. There's no way these villagers will be on this gold mine. And potentially here, Count Von Count could have had a win in this game. Uh, but not not to be here is now Count Von Count has to move over onto this gold mine over here. And we do see these houses getting taken down on this position. Migdol stronghold coming down up as well we do see the uh the raiders and the yarls coming through yet again for count on count the dwarves moving on to this position potentially going to give away that they're moving to a gold mine over here might not be the way to go as the yarls trying to snipe down this mummy it will pick off one unit can just retreat back after it uses its special but chemo not paying attention over there at this moment as uh we do see the count on counts also lost some houses here to boot it'd be really really hard to rebuild when you're uh when you're in these sorts of situations for against Ra, because Ra's building Axemen, you don't want to build Ill infantry against Axemen, so it makes you have very few building builders. So you kind of have to just set that up and see how you can go. As we do see the Dwarves going to sneak around here and potentially grab this gold mine right underneath Chemo's nose here as the uh, the Pharaoh gets pushed back over off that location. We do see the Dwarves over here as well as the Ox Carts moving in there to grab that spot. There's more Yarls coming in. The house is back up for Count Von Count. Does he have fortified town centers? Yes, he does. So another house is needed, but I'm sure he's going to be getting that one relatively soon here. How are the armor upgrades actually looking here for both players? As uh, it looks to me like Chemo is getting closer and closer to uh, to a position where he's going to be equal. And we do see the units pushing through here. Count Von Count not paying attention to the best of his ability. As now the Count Von Count Olsark's potentially going to try. He should just think about walling this off over here. Control the corners, prevent the trap from starting uh, start start bringing this game into the late game because there's no god powers remaining here and it's just it's late game style you gotta you gotta play late game here you gotta wall the map up you gotta start putting side builds everywhere defend your trade route all the all of the standard late game shenanigans here that that uh the age of mythology players are going to be well versed in but it can be difficult to realize when that kind of uh shift in the game goes from you trying to get a, a win early to you having to play for a, a much different style of game as the Ulfsark sitting over here waiting uh, waiting around, not doing all too much. More units coming out here for Count Von Count. Thundering Hooves coming through. 135 of 160 population coming in. I could imagine like a, a cheeky wall over here or something and then Ballaster to start shooting down this location could be very, very difficult to deal with right now for Chemo as well. He's still struggling for economy. You can see he's exploding some resources at the moment, but he's still struggling for economy as the Spearman getting out of position there as well. Migdol Stronghold getting taken down on this position really, really fast by these portable rams here. No no reaction thus far from Chemo as the villagers finally get pulled over here. But this is three portable rams. Oh, not just yet. They're now three portable rams to take down this Migdal stronghold as the unit's pushing through here. It might be time to start getting some throwing axemen out or something here to deal with those spearmen as uh, the units here will be able to take down those portable rams really quickly. I guess Fire Giant here as well wouldn't go astray to deal with this. Uh, is he building them? He doesn't really have to favor at this point. As now we're starting to see throwing axemen coming through. And this is a, this is a smart move here from Chemo to push into these spearmen because the, uh, the tech isn't here just yet for count on count. He will have to get himself heavy infantry here to make this work as we see the villagers now coming over onto this gold mine they see this gold mine here getting mined up and he's like i don't want to give you that one that one can't be your gold mine uh, as portable rams pushing through over here as well the uh the the yarls while they aren't trading amazingly at, the, at this stage medium spearmen they aren't that strong against cavalry here as you see me uh, as we do see a hill fort coming through here onto this position it wouldn't be a bad idea here to buy some food and then just convert these units into ulfsark to try and deal with those laborers over there and give just a little bit of a boost there as the fire giant does come through here should send those over to take out the villages on this position to prevent the Migdal stronghold from coming up. But it does look like Chemo's population is dropped now to 114 here as Count Von Count does decide to convert some Olsark over here. He's going after these units. He's getting himself heavy infantry at this point. 144 population. We see a building coming up onto this location over here as a hill fort's trying to get dropped down. We do see the walls are coming down here as well for Count Von Count to secure that stage, that side of the map here as the fire giant trying to take this town down as we do see a mummy coming through here to try and take it out. As we see, it's already clicked here. The fire giant not getting pulled back here. So it will get taken down. Unfortunate there for Count Von Count. But good play by Chemo. But the problem here is that Chemo, he's got only seven... Uh, seven 
caravans as his trade route is over on this location, pushing up to the front here, which means if he loses this town center, he loses all, uh, all potential gold income at this point. As Kimo's at 88, 90 population uh, of 160. Hillfort coming down. Migdal Stronghold getting taken down over on that location. We do see the barracks getting picked off here as uh, the Spearman swinging around here, going to be taking this down. And we'll see if Count Von Count can stabilize here and uh, and and continue this pressure. He doesn't have any, any real... Well, where is his army is the big question. I think he might be over... Yeah, he's kind of over-economized a little bit, which isn't a bad move here because it allows him to get all of the technologies he needs to. And then it allows him to do a big um, kind of semi-Ragnarok by Ulsark Ragnarok in the uh, in the later stages of the game once he's got all the upgrades. We do see some villagers coming through here. The Spearmen going to be popping in and out of this town center to hold on to it as the hill fort coming through over here. Do we see some rams? We see engineers, draft horses coming through. is going to be a really, really big help for those portable rams to start moving around the map, doing tons of damage to fire giant here will be able to take out this town center as well if he so chooses we see the barracks going down here as well chemo desperately trying to hold on to this location here but we see migdol stronghold getting thrown up on this uh on this location here as well as the uh as the town center just about to fall down here uh, more buildings coming up on this location to start trying to push in onto this back town center it has been uh injured just a little bit there or attacked a little bit it's down about a thousand HP or a little over the thousand HP as some watchtowers. Hill Fort's coming down over here as well for count on count as the town center getting closer and closer to falling. The mummy coming through here to try and take out these fire giants. We do see the raiding cavalry immediately targeting this one down. You have to take uh, an attack onto that pharaoh there to, to actually kill the town center. Otherwise, it's going to be kind of infinitely repaired here as the mummy coming through. Just click onto the mummy here. Trade one of those fire giants here, but it looks like count on count not paying attention there as the mummy gets one kill. He could potentially retreat back and off the other one here as well nice play there as the villagers trying to repair this one back up we see champion infantry coming through and bronze mail for count on count as he's getting closer and closer to that late game dream here as the dwarves going to be searching around the map for another gold mine there are no other gold mines here which means it's time to go for the old sark ragnarok there's the champion infantry in as the town center getting repaired back up 17 camel caravans out for chemo very very uh weak trade route though at 30 gold a trip compared to the 49 gold a trip for count on count as the uh, portable rams starting to come through here to bash down this location we'll be seeing portable rams over here as well another hill fort coming down over on this location to start putting pressure on this back town center as the portable ram comes through over here going to start getting the damage down uh, but the spearmen are out. The villagers going to be repairing this one up. This is a lot of resources getting thrown in onto this position over here as count on count. Iron weapons to come through here. Spearmen coming through to try and take this location out as well. The towers are down here for count on count as he's trying to strangle this one. Now we're starting to see portable rams coming through over here. Take down the houses is the is the play here with these portable rams. It's exactly. Well, he's going out to the guard tower first as walls coming down onto this position from count on count. We start seeing more units coming through here. Can he snipe down the pharaoh? Would be a really, really big help here. Uh, as the Ulfsark picking off some more units over here. We see a siege works coming down as Kimo needs to get some catapult out to deal with this location. Uh, but the portable ram picks off the tower here. It's going to be going after the barracks there. We're starting to see there's the upgrade there for the stone walls. Ballast are coming through on, on a whole bunch of different locations over here as the... As the uh, Throw an axeman trying to pick off the pharaoh here, but the pharaoh does tons of damage there. 21.6 damage. The fortified town center is still alive. I'd love to see a baluster over here with some more walls because it's plenty enough to take this location out. As the walls coming down, we do see the portable rams coming through here to continue putting pressure onto this location while the walls, the hill forts getting set up over here. Do we see the siege works up shop? up just yet not just yet but he could have built catapults out of that location over there as the ballast are pushing through onto this location count on count is absolutely str uh, strangling chemo in this game as this gold mine looks like it might be available here for chemo yet again he's sitting at 160 population now chemo is uh as he's managed to kind of get to that position that he wants to be in but is it too little too late as the uh as the units and the buildings are just completely surrounding count on count we see more towers coming up over here as the town center is getting closer and closer to falling. Meanwhile, the bas ballast are taking down that hometown center here. And in that moment, Chemo taps out. GG. Well played by Count Von Count. I thought he was going to lose it here as he was continuously putting pressure on, not stabilizing to the best of his ability. But he finally works it out. He finally works out. He's done enough damage to Chemo's economy with his Ragnarok, with all the pressure. But he just needed to get 
uh, get stabilized and then get into that late game stranglehold that Odin can do and, and Norse can do in general against Ra and he makes it work, guys. I'm sure you're all going to be incredibly happy about a Ra player uh, losing here. I think this is exactly what 2023 is. It's that, yes, Egyptian is still strong, but there are uh, there, there, it is completely possible for a Norse player to take him out. And Count Von Count showing that here. Incredibly strong start here in this series. First win for Count Von Count. If you guys enjoyed this one, please consider hitting the follow on the Twitch. If you're on the YouTube, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next game.